Well, hi everyone. I'm Melanie with Painting Crafty, and tonight is Tuesday night draw along, and we're gonna be working a little bit on this little ginger Christmas guy. His little Christmas ball, but he's drawn a little happy face of a little ginger character. Who doesn't like a little bit of a ginger man, a gingerbread man character for the Christmas month? So I'm going to be walking you step by step and showing you how to create this this person. Now, if this might be your first time drawing with me, and everybody comes in at different stages, I'll be drawing on watercolor paper tonight, the Canson brand. I like 140 pound, and this is um, oh, it's the cold press, <laughs> not the hot press. It's got a little bit of bump to it. But I always say, uh, spend just a tiny bit more money on your watercolor paper. Just, you'll have a lot better results and just buy the watercolor that you are most able to afford because that comes at all different kind of costs, just like acrylic paint does. So I've been kind of uh, fighting a cold this last week, so I'm hoping that others will say hello as you jump on. I'd love to see who's watching. Okay, I invite you in. Now I just did a circle. I'm working on a five and a half by five and a half page tonight. So it's not real big. This makes a perfect little card size or to be able to start a little collection and just kind of prop this up and have it um, sitting out for the holiday is a fun thing to do. You can put it on a little canvas too, like a little squarish canvas. It works great for that. Well, let's go ahead and look at our little face and see what we got going on here. So we're gonna have to put this little top of our little ornament up there at the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just do a little shape that comes off to the side here. We're gonna curve it, just a little bit of a curve. And then we're going to just come across now. This one's a little bit shorter. I might have put my circle a little bit off. Let's try it again. Okay, here we go. Like this. So just find something round. I just had a container in my, in my kitchen. That's what I used, a little bowl. That's what I used to create the top. And I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit of a hook. There we go. So we got something to hang our little Christmas bob on. Hello, Carrie. Thanks for popping on tonight. So glad to see your name pop up. Now let's come down here and let's work on the face. So we're going to do this um, icing shape. So the little white, we're going to try to leave a little white. But let's go ahead and start with our nose right here in the middle. So we're going to just do this kind of like a jelly bean nose. That's a real common nose, uh, nose shape that we do. So we're just going to draw this little jelly bean shape. Now when we do our eyes, that's gonna be next. Oh, hold on, oh, I'm holding on. You know what, let's see if I got, I might lose you. I'm gonna see if I can switch my um, internet. I don't think I switched my internet on my phone and that's why I'm freezing. I might end up having to, um, I might end up having to start over. Hang on, sorry about that guys. But if I don't switch to the studio, oh, does say studio. Uh, if I don't switch to my studio, then it um, it wants to it wants to uh, kick me out all the time, and then it's really hard to follow along. So we'll just start over again. We're gonna put that on mute. Uh, we're gonna enter. Oh, we gotta put it on the back camera. There's so many steps when you do this, <laughs> but we'll get it. We'll get it. Uh, enter studio. Let's try again. Hi, Tarita. Hello, Terry. Thanks, ladies, for joining in. Sorry about the delay, but for some reason, um, my camera was wanting to kick us out. So we'll just start. You know, some technology is great, but when it does a hiccup, it's really frustrating. All right, well, let's switch you around here. Let's do this, and we'll pop this over here so you can see bigger. All right, let's start again. We're on jelly bean noses. <laughs> Tarita, you are always such a sunshine yourself when you come on. Now let's go ahead and draw these eyes. Now these are just these longer ovals. And when you do draw eyes, if you want to have them kind of slanted so that they're going to be this way. When they go the other direction, they look a little too wonky and they, it doesn't look quite right. So when you're drawing your long ovals, you want them to kind of be more in a, like a triangle shape. These ones, if you look at where my nose is, I've got a little bit of space so they're off a little bit wider here and a little bit closer there. So let's see if we can't draw these. So I'm just gonna start right like that. Coming on up, there we go. And then let's do these ones. Now I never can draw it the same way twice. They always look different. I have that little saying about they're not twins, but they could be related, they could be cousins, or maybe they're brothers. 
<laughs> All right, so we've got his little eyes on and we got his little nose on. I want to make sure that I do leave a little catch light. So I'm going to just put a little catch light right there on his nose. And for his eyes, I'm going to draw the little catch lights in here tonight too. I just want to make sure I leave a little spot. Now, if you don't leave a little spot and you end up drawing, you can always come back in. Is this StreamYard? Yeah, it is StreamYard. Um, if you uh, forget to add it in, you can always come in with your pen. Now, this is a time you could decide whether or not you're going to um, have eyelashes, like big old eyelashes, smaller ones. If you want to have little eyebrows, you can put little eyebrows on them. But let's go ahead now and let's do that smile. So I'm going to come over here. I know I'm going to have my big cheeks on each side. So I'm just going to do a little motion like this for this one. And then I'm going to come over and we're going to do that other little motion here. And that's just going to um, center it out, the round gingerbread ornament. Yeah, isn't that cute? It's kind of fun. Let's see. I might need to get mine a little bit better. Well, Having my camera at this angle, it's like right in front of me. So I'm, I have a little bit of room to kind of peek over. Now, when we do our smile, it looks kind of cute as if you can, instead of just doing one big swoop like we're normally see with a smile face, what you're going to want to try to do is drop down, do a little wiggle of some sort, and then come up. That's going to really give your gingerbread person a, a character. So depending on what that smile is and what that looks like, that's gonna give it the character. So I'm gonna come down like you normally would. I'm gonna come over and then I'm gonna just do a little kind of a jog up and over. So it just gives it a little bit of a character. So you can do it lightly so you can erase because you might not get it the way you want it the first time, but you could go ahead and um, you know try it and then you can always erase but do it lightly I always have to do it darker so you can see it but if you're drawing you'd want to do it lighter also too what's really handy at this point too I didn't really do a lot of um, pen and ink work on this one I just left it mostly watercolor with a little bit of pencil and if you're going to do that that's where your gum eraser which um I put my gum eraser over on a different table and I forgot to bring it over but that's the one that can stretch like silly putty kind of and you would just roll over your drawing a little bit and that's going to pick up ever so slightly your pencil marks so they wouldn't be as strong. So that's a way you can do um, just your pencil and not get so um, heavy lined. You can do it that way. All right, so we've got that part on. Now let's work a little bit on the icing that goes all the way around. So that's just kind of a soft wiggly jiggly line. You're going to need room for two lines because you're going to want to keep it white so I'm just gonna come around and I'm just gonna go softly around it doesn't have to be exact I do want to have a little bit of room to be able to play with a darker brown too so um, I want to be able to bring in some color okay this might got a little bit too lumpy bring it down just a little bit more gentle now I can come in here and then I'm gonna follow in double up my line so I'm just gonna follow what I just did come down and again, this doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to change and take more shape as you're doing it. Okay, up and around. There we go. This line is still kind of weird. <laughs> All right, there. That looks a lot better. I'm happy with that. Now for the very top, we're going to just uh, put some greenery and then we would put um, some uh, a little bit of a string up there, a little bit of a bow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go straight up here. I haven't got a lot of room on this one, so I'm just going to go straight up. And then for my bows, I'm just going to do like one that's coming up this way, and then maybe one in the middle, maybe got room to go up high. No more than three off of each area, I would think, is what you would go for. This one, it could be a little longer in the middle. You can mix them up, whatever it, it, it amounts to. Now, this for the writing, <laughs> this one I kind of did, I started out and I didn't leave enough room and I thought, okay, maybe I could um, mix up the words and not quite have them all the way out. And I didn't care for that look. And I redid mine, I redid it, and I thought a better pattern would be to kind of think about doing like ginger Christmas, get one ginger, one Christmas on each side, 
and then just do a ginger Christmas on this side and, and there. And then at the bottom, there isn't a lot of room, so I just divided up my ginger and my Christmas there. That's how I did it on my second one that I did. Yeah, I draw them more than once. I, I have to draw them more, more than once as well. And I try different painting techniques out. So um, especially this one is a quick little drawing, so it doesn't take much. So you can always have a couple little different drawings. So I'm going to just start here and I'm going to do ginger Christmas. So I would just do ginger. I need my spell checkers to make sure I'm spelling everything right. <laughs> you know me and my spelling. Okay. Ginger. And then let's put Christmas on this side. Christmas is a little bigger. And then this baby one, you got to adjust your little greenery too. So like you might want to uh, uh, adjust your greenery so that you got room for your words if you want to put that on there I just like that saying of like ginger Christmas okay. ginger Christmas that way now it's a good idea to um, you have to decide which way your words are gonna go I'm gonna turn it this time and I'm gonna make my words go this way so I'm gonna change my idea of what I did that and then do my ginger now with this style of writing this is just more like a drawing skill the more you practice it the more the better rhythm you're going to get with your hand and you're just going to figure out what you like to do for lettering and as well as have some uppercase have some lowercase and mix it up and it'll look good it, it doesn't look like it's meant to be necessarily just a certain font so um, my regular handwriting is kind of messy. I'm not that great at doing handwriting. Okay, so I'm going to switch it this way. And now I'm going to put Ginger Christmas here, I believe, at the bottom. So I'm just going to write Ginger on this side. That there. And then I'm going to pop over here. And of course, Christmas is always so much longer. And it's a little harder to get all that word in there. But... Just gotta just kind of squeeze it in, make it some bigger, some smaller, and squeeze it in. There we go. Now to do this one, I'm gonna write this way, so I'm gonna switch it again and come over. It's just so much easier to just turn your paper and be able to do it. Well, hi, Joni, so nice to see your name pop up. So let's write Ginger Christmas here. And these little gingers are just a real uh, quick, simple draw it's a circle. <laughs> I'm going to show you a little bit different technique for the watercolor and you can decide which look you like and decide how you would like to do your ginger and then I'll add a few little doodle marks on there. Now I'm only going to do this mostly in um, pencil tonight so I don't have my gum eraser so I'm just going to use this and kind of lightly go over my pencil marks. I don't want to smear it. That's the one nice thing about the gum eraser. It won't smear as much. Let's see. I need to buy a couple of them actually and have them setting on my tables around and about. So then I have them where I want them instead of only having one and then always having to kind of keep track of it because I'm not very good at keeping track of things. Tonight I'm going to uh, be using this little watercolor set. This is the one that I bought from TVU, but you can buy this on Amazon too. It just comes with a little set of 50 colors, but it's kind of a nice little set. It's got a, a nice little uh, variety of colors. And when you get your set of watercolors, if you don't have one, um, you're gonna wanna make a color card because the colors in here look so different than what they do on paper. Because the white paper behind it's really going to affect your watercolor. So you're gonna wanna have this. This really helps when you're looking at what color you would like to use. And these ones already come already preloaded in here. The bad thing about a set like this is that when you run out of a color, you can't replace it. So it's it you just run out of it. So then you might have a favorite color and then you don't have it anymore. So you can't replace it. So the nice uh, other things about buying different sets um, that you can replace, then that would be an option is that you could replace your colors. But sometimes you with doing it that way, you, you won't necessarily be able to. Now I'm going to be able to have this little tray. This is kind of a cute little size. It fits right on in here. This one's made out of ceramic. So when you're doing watercolor, to have a little palette, anything that's hard. It could be metal. It could be the top of my lid. I could easily use that. Or anything plastic, as long as it's non-porous is what you're looking for. 
All right, tonight I'm going to be using my watercolor brush, the Velvet Touch Princeton brush. The number six round is probably what I'm, uh, that's what I'm going to use mostly. And then I'll switch to a bigger one to do my background. Now I have a little clean water off to the side, and then I always have a paper towel in my hand so I can touch my paper, maybe take off some water, test my color. So it's good to have it. So if you're right-handed, try to keep everything on your right-hand side. That kind of avoids the issue of splashing unintentionally on what you're drawing or painting. And if you're left-handed, keep it on the other side of you. So let's go ahead and start. So I'm gonna be mixing a gingerbread color and I'm just gonna take a little bit, oh, that's that, oh, that's that. This set does not have that great of browns. I'm gonna take this kind of a reddish brown color here is what I wanna take. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow ochre into it too, some yellow. So I'm gonna golden it up just a little bit. I'm gonna make my own brown. I know, I say that every time, right? The set doesn't have that great of browns in it, <laughs> but it doesn't. But you can play around with it and mix your own. So you're looking to be about the consistency of tea is what you're looking for. Now I'm gonna come right on in here. That's a little, well, I guess that is a little pencil mark. I was thinking it was a little piece of eraser, but it looks like it's on pencil mark. Oh well. So I'm gonna come on in and I'm gonna be painting on dry paper and I'm just gonna start laying my color down. And I'm gonna change the direction of my brush a little bit. This is kind of a big circle. I'm gonna to try to go around that area I wanna leave white. I'm gonna to try to go around it so I'm gonna leave it white. Now in the end, if you end up not leaving it white, like you get it all covered up and you're like, oh, I lost all of my white. What you can do is um, take you could even take a little acrylic paint and, and go ahead and add the white on that way. So all's not lost. You can add a little bit of acrylic paint or you could use your white pens, your Posca pens, let the water dry a little bit, your paint dry, and then you can come in. Now I've been adding a little bit more water to my color off to the side, clean water. So I've been picking up a little bit more water just to get my color to spread a little bit more. So I'm adding more water off to the side. Now watercolor is going to dry lighter, so it's not gonna stay this dark. And I'm trying to keep a wet edge here, so I'm not gonna get any super hard lines. So I'm just coming right on in. I'm not wanting a bunch of hard or big puddles on here. If I do, what will happen, it's gonna get these little blooming edges and you can kind of see where it's already starting here. Do you see how it's got this little edge, this little mushroom shape? That's because there's a lot of water there and that puddle is sitting and it's drying, which is a cool look if that's what you want, but I'm not really wanting that look. So I wanna be a little conscientious of the fact that do I got too much puddles going on and do I need to pull that in a little bit? Okay, so there's my brown there. Now I'm gonna to come to this outside and work this little edge. Again, I'm trying to keep um, that little bit of icing on there. This would be really cool too. Um, has anybody ever used that um, puffy paint stuff? Where I've seen people use it in mixed media, but this might be kind of a fun little project if you wanted to turn it into a mixed media piece, is to add a little bit of that puffy paint around for the icing. That might be kind of fun. That'd be fun. And of course, uh, a little bit of glitter. That would always be fun at the end to make them a little bit glittery would be fun. I'm just going right around on this edge. There we go. Now I'm going to give that just a minute to dry, just a few little minutes, uh, so I'm not going in too soon. I'm going to touch my color here if I want to soften some of these lines up while I've still got a chance. That looks good. Okay, pretty good. Now while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be using um, gel pens tonight. So I'm going to be using just a simple one. It's just a little simple set. Let me see this way. We'll go this way. This is a little set. It's uh, got some metallic in there, which makes it fun. But I'm just going to give that a little bit of chance to dry. But while that's doing that, I'm going to work on some of my lettering that I can just touch without running my hand through it. Because gel pens do take a little bit of time to dry. So I have made the accident of running my hand right through them before they were allowed to dry. So if I do something, I wanna make sure I can keep my hand out of it. And I'll just do a few with a 
there. I was writing upside down. Oh, you weren't even in camera, so you couldn't even see what I was doing. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I was like, oh, silly girl, she's not a camera. Okay, so let's do, I'll make sure I'm in camera this time. So I'm just gonna come up. I'm just using this. It's kind of a, a smoky, it's not really black, but it's not really gray. But I wanted to use this color because um, I'm gonna be doing some really dark eyes on my gingerbread man. And I wanted to be able to bring that dark color into my picture. Now sometimes, and this may have not, and we're gonna find out, I guess. Sometimes, depending on the gel pen, it can bleed if you get water on it. So um, I should have maybe waited until the end. Just being impatient, I guess. Being impatient. I'm gonna draw a few lines down here too. I'm gonna to add just a little bit of a cap design on there. I think that would look cute. And I'm gonna be drawing some little lines here. Probably see them in the end, but that will work just fine. Okay, I think I'm ready to do another layer of brown on my gingerbread man. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up some more brown. Now this time I'm not gonna add the gold into it, so I'm just gonna keep it that brown color. I'm still mis mixing it to about um, tea consistency. You watch the replay, how cute, oh, thanks for popping on, Donna. So let's go ahead and now add another layer. So I'm gonna be going, making sure I'm adding the darker color to the whatever side I want the shadow. And this is gonna be on the outside, so I know I want this darker. And if you leave a little bit of that first color showing, that's great because that just adds that little bit of a layer to your end. And I'm not looking to be perfect with my circle. I'm not going to let that stress me out. If I don't have a perfect little look with my circle, I'm okay with that. Now, I was planning on doing that little top metallic. There's a little bit of metallic paint in this set, so those are always kind of fun to use. Okay, so I've got that little dark. Here you go in there. Now let's go ahead and work into the middle. So that's just that brown color that I'm using. So I'm not as gold, but I'm still about tea consistency. Now I'm gonna make my side, I was probably going to be, if you look at this one I did earlier, I have kind of a darker area up here, a little bit darker off to the side, but I kind of left the middle of his face a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna try to do that again. So we're gonna come in and do this darker, next to my icing. That's just going to help that pop because it's so light. And I'm going to come in here and I want that white to pop. And I'm coming in and I'm just adding that next layer, but I'm not trying to cover up everything I already put on. So I still want a little bit of that first layer showing. Because that's the cool thing about watercolor is seeing all the different layers. Now if you notice, I'm changing the direction of my brush. I'm not keeping it all the same direction. And that just kind of helps breaking up and not having same, same, same. Adds a little bit more whimsicalness to your drawing. Okay, so now I'm gonna take that same brown color over here and I'm gonna add just the tiniest bit of black to it this time. So I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of black now my color over here is pretty wet, but I'm gonna do the wet on wet technique now because this is pretty wet. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add a little bit darker color on the side. Now you can add, you can keep it kind of fairly smooth. This one I kept fairly smooth. It wasn't like there was a lot of variation. And this cookie, I actually gave it a little bit more texture. So I gave it a little bit more brush work on there. So that's another look you can you can attempt or try. And the way I added the little brushwork technique is that I left little dots like I came back in. So I picked up a little bit darker color and then I dotted it and added a little bit of texture that way. So there's a couple different ways. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do this one darker. Add just a tiny bit around his eyes. And I wanted to leave that kind of that center a little bit brighter. That darker color. And I'm going to rinse my brush out, bring clear water in. I tap my paper towel just to get a little bit of water off. And I'm going to brush that color out just a little bit on my edges. Okay. 
I'm gonna let that sit and see what that does. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add just a little bit more of that darker color to the outside. So take your time and, and work your watercolor. That's the, the beautiful thing about watercolor is seeing all the layers and the subtle shades. So if you take your time and layer in some colors, it's really gonna make a difference in your watercolor. There you go. A little bit more underneath his nose. I'm gonna dry my brush out, rinse it out with clear water. And I got kind of, it's called a thirsty brush, so there's not a lot of moisture on here. So that's gonna allow me to pick up some color too. So if I wanna try to pop in a highlight, I can come by doing that. I can use a thirsty brush to pick up a little bit of color and make a little bit of a highlight. And then I can also rinse it out, come down and then blend my color out a little bit more. Gotta be careful not to work it too much because you can end up with a big hole. Like I'm getting really close to ending up with a big hole here. Okay, I better let that dry before I end up making a mess. Okay, let's let that dry. Why don't I go ahead and pop in some metallic color at the top. So I'm just gonna choose, I have like about, um, well, there's a silver, a copper, a bronze, and a gold. And let's try this color. Let's see what this looks like. It's kind of an in-between, kind of a copperish goldish color. Okay, we'll let that just sit. Copper's always a good color. It's fun. We'll let that dry just a tiny bit. Now this is still pretty wet, so it, it kind of worries me a little bit to kind of go right in and do the eye work right now. I do need to give it a little bit of a chance to dry. Otherwise, um, it will bleed out. So as soon as I were to hit that darkness in there and it hit that brown, since my paper is wet there, that color is going to want to just whoosh, go right on out because watercolor always wants to travel where the paper is wet. So I do want to give it a little bit of chance to dry before I were to come in and do the nose and the eyes. So I have to be patient. And it's hard for me to be patient. <laughs> it's hard for me to be patient. So let's go ahead and work a little bit on the greens at the top. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose a shade of green. I'm a light shade of green first. So that looks pretty dark in here, but when I get it on my paper, it's going to be a lighter color. So if you can see when I put it in my tray, it's pretty light. That's the difference between um, seeing it in, in your palette dried versus having it on your plate. So for these, I'm just going to just tap it and do a simple little evergreen on each side. So I'm just going to start light, and all I'm doing is just tap and release with my brush. Nothing too fancy. I am going to do a little um, gel pen work on these as well. So I'll be adding some um, little skinnier lines with a gel pen. I'm okay if I can still see my pencil. So this isn't anything too fancy. It's kind of like chicken scratching, actually. It's like little tiny um, V's that go down is what I'm making on each side of my little sticks. So that's the lightest one. And then I'm gonna pick up another color darker. So I'm gonna move down my palette and I'm gonna pick up kind of this bluish green, brighter green, kind of a Kelly green. And I'm gonna come in here and tap this. Now this, that yellow is, or the yellowish green is still wet. And I'm okay with that, that those colors are gonna blend together. It's actually gonna make it look pretty when you have the colors kind of blend together. So I'm just tapping that in between. This is kind of the darker area of these little greens. So I'm just tapping those in there, letting the colors just play and work together. Okay, that looks cute. Now I'm gonna let those dry because I will be putting, um, hello Facebook user, I'm using StreamYard tonight so I can't really see your name. If you if it asks you to, um, if you want me to see your name, all you have to do is agree to that Facebook um, or StreamYard show your name it's a facebook rule i guess with streaming services let's add a little bit more black into my brown kind of got this little funky thing here i played around with it too much and kind of got a funky little coloration going here he's looking like he's a burnt cookie <laughs> let's add a little bit more dark let's cover up that little area okay let's come in here or you could just tell me your name too and then i would be able to see it Okay, so let's just scoot a little bit more color in this. I'm going to be giving him some red cheeks too at the end, so we'll be adding that on. 
Okay, that kind of evened them out a little bit more. Each little layer makes a difference. He's still got a nice little whimsical look to him though. He hasn't come to life yet until I put his cheeks and his um, mouth on him. Okay, we still haven't lost our, our white rim, so that's good. Excuse me. <clears throat> I've had a, a cold that's been sitting in, oh, hi, Michelle. Hi, Jeannie. <coughs> I've had a cold that's been resting right here for about a week now, but at least I have a voice now, so I'm happy about that. I, I kind of still sound like a teenage boy with a changing voice, but um, it's back a lot better than what it was, so I'm grateful for that. Okay, so let's do his nose. Let's see if I can go in there, and I'm going to take a little bit of this peachy, pinky color. Now, he would be cute, too, with a more red nose if he wanted to do red. I'm just going to do pink. Pink is kind of popular this Christmas season. It's still kind of wet. We'll see how well that color sits in there. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of my black, but I'm going to water it down considerably. I want to start out light and then work my way dark. So I'm going to make a little bit lighter than tea consistency. I'm going to give that a tap, a tap on my paper towel to make sure that I am okay with that color. I think we'll be safe. I'm going to come in here and add the dark first layer. Sorry for my voice. I was hoping it was going to last the whole hour, but I chose kind of a simpler picture tonight just in case. It was like, oh, I'm only going to be able to make it for a half an hour. Okay, so we've got that on there. Now I'm going to add a little bit more color. So I'm taking a little bit more color from my palette and I'm going to add it into this little well here. And by adding the more pigment, it's going to be a darker color. I'm going to come in and give it a tap and then I'm going to just tap this color in off to the sides here and let that color roll in to the inside of the eye. And because that color is really wet on the inside, that watercolor is just going to do its own little thing and it's going to find what it wants to do and where the color is going to go. He's got a little bit of shine on his eye. Let's see. Well, that's just the way it is tonight, I guess. He's got a very shiny eye <laughs> on that one side. <coughs> He's really not that shiny. Okay, so let's make a little bit for his pink cheek. So I'm going to take a little bit of red. I might want to add a little bit more red to his nose. So I'm going to take a little bit of red here. This is what I'm going to use for his cheeks. That looks good. You know, this is kind of dry, mostly dry. I'm going to take my one. And I'm going to do my little face here. I'm kind of doing things out of order tonight just because it's a smaller picture. Okay, there we go. I'm going to give that just a second to dry. You could also hit it with your um, heat tool if you wanted to, but that does curl up your paper when you do that. So uh, the one thing about being a little patient Letting it dry, your paper won't curl as much, but you can get that to settle down if you put some, um, <laughs> if you could, if you put some a little bit of um, heat on the back too. Yes, Jeannie's been struggling with a cold too, so she her voice and everything has been struggling with that too. Tis the season, right? Now I'm just using this little glitter pen. I'm going to add a few little berries right on here, just add a little bit of sparkle. The sparkle's always cute. Like I said, I might be living dangerous by putting this gel pen on before I put my background color on, but I'm just going to be going with it. You'll learn from me tonight. If it actually smears everywhere, you're going to know. Don't do that. Okay. Let's spin this little guy the whole way around and do his his top part here. Am I not in the camera? There we go. I have to remember to make sure you're in the camera. I'm going to do this upside down. Jeannie's a painter and she paints upside down. I don't know how she does it. It's a difficult skill.
by turning it upside down, I'm not going to run my hand through anything that's going to be wet. So that's why I'm doing it that way. Now let's go ahead and add a little bit of a red ribbon up here too. So I'm going to take this pen, that just straight up. I'm going to just do a simple little bow, that, and then let's do a little bit of a wiggle with a ribbon kind of round and around wherever it may make sense. That, let's come around this way. Oop, my pen is running out of color, which is so weird because it's all, it looks like it's full all the way up, but maybe that's just fooling me. It's really not that full. Okay, that works that way. Okay, that looks great. Let's use this little dark one again to do the top here. I'm gonna use this to add a little bit of dark to this piece. Okay. <coughs> after your dry, after your eyes have a chance to dry, I'm sorry, you guys. <coughs> I'm still fighting it. Have you seen that girl who can paint four pieces of art at the same time, one for each hand and foot? No. <laughs> oh my goodness. That would be quite the talent. Okay. I'm thinking my eyes need to be a tiny bit darker. Because watercolor always dries slightly lighter. I don't know if I'm going to make it through this one, Jeannie. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> I might have to delete this at the end with all the barking. If I watch it back and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I sound like a barking seal. Might have to delete this one. Here we go. Okay. Just a little bit more dark. I'm going to pop it in there because I want those eyes to be kind of dreamy, kind of um, just a darker little look to it, but that's what's going to make him cute. Let's go ahead and add just a tiny bit more red to his nose. Okay, I'm liking that. Now let's work a little bit on those cheeks. I'm going to really do my red, uh, blend it, water it down. And I hope you feel better. I know. You know, I feel fine. It's just now it's just this cold or this cough that's coming along with it. It's been a multi-step process. It's been interesting. So I'm going to come in here and um, add this on top. Now, because that brown is underneath there and it hasn't had a long time to dry at all, it's going to want to pick up my color. So I'm going to move quick and it's watered down. And I'm not trying to make perfect little round apple circles where everything is solid. I still want to see some of my brown showing through. So that's about what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop. I'll hold it up a little bit closer so you can kind of see. I didn't cover up all my brown. I still have a little bit of brown showing in there. So I don't want it to um, get too, spend too much time there because that brown really hasn't had a lot of time to draw. Now some of my red went in here and I'm just using a thirsty little brush. I washed my brush out with clean water. Then I came over to my paper towel and then dried it fairly well. And then I'm coming in here and then kind of tickling or pushing that area to see if I can't pick up a little bit of that red so it's not sitting there so um, hard. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and we're gonna find out if that if that um, glitter pen is gonna, if it's going to move for me or not. Okay, I'm just gonna pick up just a pretty little blue. I'm not looking to do a super dark background. I just wanted to do it kind of quick and fast. So I'm going to do just a light wash. So again, nothing thicker than tea is what you're looking for. Set that up there. My brush is pretty loaded. So I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to go quickly over this area. I'm going to change my hand direction. So it's not everything is the same. And you got to remember that if you spend too much time or you get too close into that area, it's going to want to flow into my brown ginger guy. So I really don't want to spend a ton of time there. I'm going to move. Oh, but it doesn't look like my bro or my glitter pen is bleeding. It looks like it's staying, which is good. <laughs> Although it might be picking up some of the glitter because I can see some glitter in my little blue tray. So it might be. Um, picking up some glitter from the actual pen. <laughs> oh gosh, it's a big experiment. Okay, he's cute. 
cute as can be, as they say. Okay, there he is. Now you could easily um, come in and add a few more doodle lines. I did on this one, I added some dash marks with the red glitter pin and added all of that on there. And you can add more if you, you would like. And also too, it looks kind of cute on here too, is if you can add a little bit of white dots on his cheek, but this paper is way too wet to be able to do that. I would need to go back in and use like um, my Uniball pen, my Posca Uniball pen would be a good one. I could come in and add those little white dots on his cheek if I wanted to. And if you wanted to brighten your white, you could come in with acrylic paint and just do a little bit of that around the edge. Or you could use your, your pen as well, or a Posca pen too. You could come in and add a little bit of that there too. But you could add a little bit more twinkle to his cheek by just adding a few little dots. Here's some here. I added the little dots here and those ones. And then this one here, I added the little dots. So they have a little bit different texture to each of them. Oh, and this little gal's got some eyelashes, which I could add on. Let's put those on there. I drew those in pencil. I just didn't put them in with my pen. This is a number one micron pen. Okay, cute. Cute, 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 as we say in Painting Crafty. <laughs> I think he's darling. Well, we're going to call that a short night of painting. Well, we, my, I'm, my voice almost made it. Not quite. <laughs> So sorry about that, that it didn't uh, make it all the way. And I had some blips and blops of technology at the beginning, but it was a little rough video tonight. But thank you so much to <clears throat> for those who are joining in. Um, I so appreciate it. I'm happy to be back. I'm going to be back tomorrow. And um, yeah, I do too. Well, it's it's just a voice thing. But tomorrow is my birthday, and if Carrie's on, and Carrie's birthday is the day after mine, so tomorrow's my birthday, so Kendra and I are going to be going live tomorrow at 10 o'clock central, and we're going to be making uh, uh, some Christmas ornaments to go on her Christmas tree, so we're working on making some gnome Christmas ornaments is what we're going to be doing, and that's 10 o'clock central. If you are available, we'd love for you to come and join us and and see what we're up to. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Yes. So we'll be doing that tomorrow, and then on um, Thursday I'll be going live again for Draw Along, and that one is Quick quick Sketch Thursday, and that always happens just on YouTube. And then Saturday we have another big event. We're going to be doing um, the second annual Stocking Exchange in the Take 5 group. So we each get sent a package, we don't know what's in there, and um, then we have to create something out of what they send us. So it's, <laughs> we never know what we're going to get. It's always an interesting event. So anyway, I uh, check my schedule on my page, on my Facebook page. If you draw this little ginger, I'd love to see yours too. You can always post it underneath the page on my Facebook page, underneath the post. You can add yours there. And I'd love to share what you do too, because I think it's an encouragement to others to try. Well, thanks so much, ladies, for joining in tonight. And you have a good evening. Good night now. Got to end the stream.